welcome to Bolt Action CP. This time I'm doing another painting tutorial. Again for my Blitzkrieg Germans, I'm going to be painting up this uh, Opal Blitz. This is a 148 scale Tamiya Opal Blitz. A uh, great model. Comes with uh, all the uh, fuel cans and everything in the back. and It's a little different. They have another version of it too, but this seems to be a new version, an early war version. So it's really nice. It's got a uh, driver, um, like I said, all the stuff in the back. So anyway, I've assembled it. Uh, I've base coated it black. I do my vehicles with a black base coat instead of the gray. I just think it's better for vehicles to do the black base coat. So anyway, I'll get started on the painting of this Opal Blitz. So the first thing we'll do is the German gray base coat. Uh, I'm starting. I'm switching to these Tamiya uh, paints from my airbrush. I was using the model Air Vallejo, and I liked them, but they just seem to clog up my airbrush really fast now. And I've had really good luck with these uh, Tamiya paints lately. It is winter though, so maybe that the cold inside my uh, nerd cave here has something to do with it, but. Uh, I don't know. I just found that these Tamiya paints are spraying a lot better and I'm getting better results. So I'll go ahead and start with the German Grey base coat. Alright, now the base uh, coat German Grey is done. Now I'm going to start the panel highlights. Um, it's just basically all you do is take a little bit lighter color and spray inside the panels just to give them a little bit of uh, hi not highlighting but depth. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that uh, German gray color that I, that I painted the uh, base coat with and I'm going to mix a little bit of this neutral gray in with it about 50-50. And then I'll just hit the inside of the panels, and that'll be the first of the panel highlights. Alright, now the first panel highlight's done. What I'm going to do is take that same mixture, 50-50 German Grey, and neutral gray and add a tiny bit of this royal light gray to it and just do a smaller area inside the panel to make it more to give it more depth all right so we're done now with the uh, painting of the main color the body um, we can see the panel highlights kind of good in here and it looks pretty light right now but once we get all the pin washing done and the tires and everything all painted up on it it should look uh, pretty decent so that's it for painting the main color now we're gonna go pick out all the bits and tires uh, axe handles shovel handles the barrels gas cans all that stuff so yeah, let's get started. We're going to start off with the black. So the tires, pretty much the only thing black on the model. So I'm going to be using this, uh, oh, that's the wrong one. Uh, model Air, NATO black. Uh, I like this color. Um, it's a really flat black. So it's good for tires and anything uh, black, basically. Um, I like to use the model air as, as well because it's th pretty thinned. It's designed for airbrushes, but it's great for painting with. I also use a wet palette, which is just a paper towel and some parchment paper. And then you soak the paper towel with water and it permeates the parchment paper and it keeps the paint moist. So you can put the lid on it, come back the next day and start painting again. Another thing I use are these, uh, 
magnifying glasses. I guess I'm becoming an old man now, but uh, these things really help. They um, they're like a one or two times magnification, and they make it painting a lot easier. So I would recommend it for anyone, even young guys with uh, good eyes would do well to get a pair of these. I think those are off some, you know, as seen on TV thing, but they work really well for this. So I'll go ahead and get started and get the black done. All right, we're done with the tires. Um, <clears throat> I didn't do a perfect job on them. There's some parts I missed, but it doesn't matter because in the weathering, we're going to be pretty much covering these tires with dust and stuff anyway. So the tires are done. One thing I want to do I forgot was I'm going to do a really light uh, dry brush with the light lightest gray that I used uh, in the panel shading. So I'm just going to get my uh, dry brush. These makeup brushes are great for dry brushing. They're very soft and you can just really lightly get it on there. Uh, so if you pick one of these up or you got a wife or something you can get one from. I suggest getting one because they're great for doing dry brushing. So I'll go ahead and do that with this color. Okay, so I did that. Um, just adds a little bit of that light color very lightly to the, some of the raised, the raised parts. Uh, so add a little bit more highlighting to it. So now I'm going to do the driver. Um, I left the windows off for now. I'll put them in at the end. Uh, the driver is just going to match my other early war guys. Uh, field gray. Can't really see him that well, so he's not going to get a lot of attention. But field gray. Um, no highlighting or anything, just some, a wash over them and then the, the skin. So that'll be it for the driver. Alright, I finished the driver. Um, nothing special really, just, uh, he's just very basic. Um, you can tell he's got his skin, his uh, field gray uniform. I put a wash on the skin, wash on the uniform. And then I've also painted the um, seat black as well, which I forgot to do when I was doing the tires. So now I'm going to move on to the stuff in the back, in the bed. Uh, I use German Camo Dark Green. For painted metal on my Germans. I'm going to paint the barrels with that. Some of the gas cans. I'll leave a few gray just to add some variety. And then the tarps, the two tarps I'll paint with German camo beige. And then I'll put a uh, another um, Agrax Earthshade uh, wash over everything. And then I'll just go back over with the original color to and a dry brush to uh, highlight it again, to highlight it back up. So I'll go ahead and take care of that. So I finished the stuff in the back, um, painted the barrels and a few of the cans, the German camo dark green, like I said. Um, German camo beige uh, for the tarps. I put the Agrax Earthshade wash, and then when that dried, I just went back around it with some uh, the same color to do some highlighting just on the edges, the high points, and then just a real quick dry brush um, of the same color on the tarps. So while that was uh, drying, the wash I painted that thing orange. Um, I don't know what that is. It's some kind of marker for uh, 
convoy marker or something, but I'm not sure what it is. But anyway, so that's done. Now I'm going to go in and do the uh, handles for the shovel and the pick and then the metal. So for the shovel and pick, I'm using the Panzer Aces uh, new wood color. And then for the metal, I'm using the uh, Vallejo Model Air Black Metallic. Uh, that'll be for the shovel head, the jack, the pickaxe head. Uh, I think that's it for metal. And then uh, that's a good color to use. I used to mix uh, black with a uh, shiny metal color. Um, but I found it easier to buy that black metal color. And it, it looks good because it has a little bit of shine to it. And it's consistently the same color every time. I'll go ahead and put that, uh, do that, and then we'll be back. We are now done with the wood and the metal. And that pretty much does it for the painting portion of the truck. Everything's painted. Um, next will be the part that takes forever, and that's the pin wash. And what that is, I take a black wash, and in this case I use Badab Black, and add a little bit of future floor polish to it. And that's supposed to help it run into the creases, not pool up anywhere. But you still need to be careful and use a really fine tip brush and try to just get it around the things that need shadow. So like the door handle, in between all these boards on the bed, and these vents here, uh, and the grill in the front. Um, some guys will use, will do a wash over the whole thing. They'll spray like a feature floor polish over the entire model. And then when that dries, they'll put the wash on, and in theory, that's supposed to allow the wash to run into the recesses. But I've never really had much luck with that. It works okay, but I still find some pooling. Um, and I also find it just makes everything darker. I guess you could make everything lighter and then do that and then tone it down and make it how you want, but I've kind of given up on that. Uh, method and now I've gone to the pin wash when I found out about that which is directly applying the um, wash to just the areas that need the shadow so we'll do that that takes that takes the longest of the whole thing and then once that's done we'll do some uh, chipping weathering uh, before we do that we'll put the decals on actually will be the first thing we do after the pin wash and then we'll do the chipping and then we'll do the weathering and then we'll put the windows in and this one will be done all right so i've completed the pin wash so that adds a little bit of shadow uh, like in the vents along the boards it's not real obvious in this light but it does make most of the raised parts stand out a little bit more, especially on the bed. Um, so anyway, uh, done with that. Now the next step is going to be the decals. And decals I'm going to be doing, I have another truck just like this that I've already done. So I'm going to make it match uh, that one. So we're going to be doing the that one there. It says Eastern Front. These are for France. Um, I'm not going to be that crazy about about it. I like the way it looks because it has a white, some white uh, markings on it. It adds a little pop to it. So that's what we're going to go with. So now that we're done with the pin wash, we will go ahead and start on the decals.
So I finished applying the decals to match uh, my other truck. So there's the decals. These ones back here were kind of a pain. They're three different ones to get that L shape. Um, I did use some of this micro set stuff. It's supposed to soften them a little bit. It seems to work okay. Um, I had a little bit of issues getting these uh, ones on the front fenders smooth and flat because they're curved on a curved surface so it's just it's tough to do but overall I think it looks okay uh, one thing that I also need to do is I've got a couple of these uh, MG 34s from the Blitzkrieg box that I'm going to paint up and they're going to go on top of the truck so that we can have a uh, machine gun per truck. Um, I just paint these up with the same metal color I use for the metal parts and then I'll use a darker wood a mahogany brown color for the uh, the stock and the, and the handle. So I'll go ahead and paint those up and then as soon as this uh, the decals are totally dry I'll start the chipping and weathering portion. Okay the chipping. Um, I use the sponge method. I just use the corner of this sponge. I got it out of one of the blisters for the World War stuff. Um, I'm going to be using this whole red color. It's kind of a rust color. So I don't... Usually I do chipping. I do German gray as my chipping color. But these are German gray. So they wouldn't show up as much. So I'm just going to do some light chipping with the whole red. And at the same time I'm going to paint the exhaust. This color. This is a good base color for... Uh, things that are rusty and then later I'll add some rust uh, rust weathering to it so I'll get started on that all right so I finished the um, chipping I said very light chipping it's almost hard to see it um, in this light but it is there um, not real heavy so next I'm gonna do the weathering part so for that I'm gonna use this MIG uh, dark mud it's a powder I use a uh, another makeup brush real soft and I use it just lightly along the bottom as a base mud coat it'll cover the wheels uh, up under the undercarriage down here and then I'll go over that uh, with this dust uh, dust powder, a lighter dust color powder, and um, that'll I'll do a little bit of around up here, some spots around just random, just where they've gone more dust on that part for some reason. And then for the exhaust, I'm going to use this um, Vallejo rust texture and this rust powder. This stuff works really well for rust. It looks awesome. You put this uh, rust texture on where you want it to be rusty. And then you get this stuff kind of wet in a, with a wet brush. You can just dab it on over this. And then you can go back and dab some more of this over that. And it gives it a nice layered rusty um, appearance. It looks very realistic. So I'll go ahead and get started. Do the uh, weathering. And I think after that... Really all that will be left is to put the um, windows in. So let's go ahead and do the weathering. Alright, so I'm done with the weathering now. Um, went light on the weathering. I didn't want to make it too muddy 
didn't want to make it muddy at all actually I just wanted to have it dusty so there's that it matches pretty well with the other truck um, the next thing the last step is to put the windows in um, I know in the instructions it makes it appear like you're supposed to paint all the parts then glue the windows in then glue all the parts together but I'm not that good uh, I would screw it up somehow and I found that putting it all together painting it painting the man inside and then gluing the windows in afterwards is a better way for me to do it <clears throat> so what I do is I take a toothpick with some white glue and I just stick it in there and go along the edges and then put the window in with some tweezers and push it into place and it seems to work pretty well it's worked uh, worked well on my other truck so uh, we'll give it a try hopefully it works as well this time as it did for my last truck All right, so I got the windows in. I had a bit of an issue. Um, I noticed earlier that the cab part wasn't fully flush with the bottom. And then I, as I was putting in the windows, I realized why I had put them behind the windshield wipers. Oh, I'm sorry, in front of the windshield wipers. They're supposed to go behind. So I couldn't get the windshield in. I had to do a bit of a, uh, emergency surgery job to move the bottom part of the cab back so that the windshield would sit flush but in the process I had to cut a little piece off or broke off so anyway uh, that's unfortunate I'm sad that that happened um, but anyway I'm done this is the end um, here's the truck now so it's got its weathering, it's got its head, uh, windshield in. I decided to leave both the door windows rolled down. In other words, not put them in. Um, it's got his machine gun. So there he is. That's the end result. Um, as I said earlier, I have a second truck. So now I have two, two trucks for my uh, Blitzkrieg Germans. Got the air recognition flag on one. I have more. I'm probably not going to put one on every truck. They're more for the tanks. But I think together they look pretty good. I'm happy with how they turned out. Um, I don't know if I'll be building any more. I think I'm going to get a half track uh, for my Pioneers. A Pioneer half track. And... Um, again, overall, I'm happy with the result of both of these trucks, and I hope that this may come in handy for anyone wanting to paint a early war German vehicle. I mean, the tutorial, it's good for any kind of gray uh, German vehicle, really, not just a truck. This just happened to be what I was painting now, but... So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll come back next time.